Bonjour tout le monde. Welcome back to We in France. Now tell me, when you think of France, you might think of berets, fancy food, leisurely strolls along the Seine if you're in Paris, but the reality of life in France is very different from the cliches that you might know and actually love. Reality, truth be told, it is nothing like what we see in the movies, 99% of the time anyway, but it is normal to not know what real life is like somewhere when we haven't quite experienced it for ourselves. Now, to that end, I recently did a video on myths about French people, but today I want to get into five misconceptions about actual life in France, about how people actually live that I've heard time and time again over the years, and I want to set the record straight. So with that, let's jump into it. Okay, number one, that income taxes in France are 45%. And I have heard this over and over, especially on my Facebook page, that the French pay 45% across the board in income tax. And people bring this up, usually people who don't live in France and don't have any firsthand knowledge. And it always comes across in a way that has this undertone of like, gotcha, you're an idiot for living in France because taxes rob you blind. It's just like the, the, the tone that you get from it. And of course, we're all entitled to our opinion, but let's get the facts right. They're important. And I want to start by saying there are several types of taxes in France. You have just for starters, uh, income tax, property tax, inheritance tax, and then social charges. But no, income taxes are not 45% of your earnings. Just no. Let me say that right off the bat. And I'm taking this right from the official public service website. I'm going to put that up on screen. This isn't my opinion or something that I'm just making up or what I feel is the truth. This is from the official website. Now, France has a progressive income tax that assesses each bracket of your income differently. So everyone pays zero income tax on earnings up to about 10,000 euros. Then the portion from about 10,000 to 27,000 is taxed at 11% and then it goes up. So you're only paying a percentage on each bracket. Now, if you do make more than 168,000 euros, you pay 45% only on the part above 168, not the whole thing. And most French people make nowhere, nowhere near that amount. A salary outside of Paris that's, say, 4,000 euros a month net, that is really good, but it is nowhere near 168,000 a year that would be subject to that, that bracket of above 168 at 45%, okay? And FrenchProperty.com, they explain that a nice chunk of French people pay a zero income tax because of things like tax credits, incentives, and they quote, only 45% of inhabitants in France pay any income tax at all. Only 14% pay the rate of 30%. And things that help you get your tax bill down, well, if you're the sole breadwinner of your family, you have uh, three kids, if you make certain charitable donations, if you make energy efficient improvements to your home, like solar panels. And I have to say, before moving to France, my taxes in the US were significant as a self-employed person. So when you think about how we do things in the U.S., um, if you're self-employed, you add income tax and then you have self-employment tax. I was paying, I think, 15.3%. When you add that in with the monthly American healthcare premium that was coming out of my pocket, what I was paying then was not so different from what I'm paying now. And I, I want to also say I am not a tax professional. And of course, income taxes are way more complicated than, than what I've just explained. And some people's situations mean they might incur a wealth tax or they're subject to other reporting requirements that do increase that tax burden. So I just want to say, consult a tax professional for information that's going to be applicable to your situation. But as a married couple with no kids, Tom and I don't get the same tax credit as, say, a family where only one parent works and maybe they had three kids. The other thing that confuses people about taxes in France is the difference between taxes and social charges, les cotisations right? Um, they're not the same thing. Now, as a self-employed person here in France, I pay both income tax and social charges. Now, if you're an employee of a company, the company takes the majority of the social, social charges out of your pay automatically. It's not something you need to pay the bill on like I do. But, you know, they still get paid, whether it's you paying or the employer paying. And that's often why French salaries feel a lot lower than comparable American salaries for similar jobs. But, you know, let's not get into the weeds too much. I want to say that for your everyday middle-class person in France, taxes are not ridiculous. Now, of course, that's subject to your opinion. They're not nothing, but they aren't the numbers you see people casually throwing around. As I said, facts matter. And all that said, I think maybe the most important thing here is that the taxes and social charges that we pay here in France, 
they don't go into a, a black hole, poof. You know, there are benefits that the community receives in return. We get healthcare, we have unemployment, we have maternity, paternity leave. Um, and it's not just for a week. There are family benefits. There's affordable higher education and infrastructure in France. It all goes to funding something. All that said, it is a completely different system than what we have in the US. And it's certainly not an apples to apples comparison. But just to sum this point up, personally speaking, I don't mind paying into the system for the greater good of all. And let me quote JFK, my grandpa used to say this all the time, a rising tide lifts all ships. But to be honest, if I was a high net worth individual bringing in 200,000 euros a year, maybe I'd deal differently. I don't know. All right, number two, that I have to pay taxes in both the US and France. And that's not true. I do not pay taxes in France and the US. As a permanent resident in France and a US citizen, I am required to file a tax return in the US for as long as I remain a US citizen and earn over the filing threshold. Now, that does not mean I have to pay taxes in the US. That's There's a little little bit of a nuance there. So Thanks to a double taxation treaty between France and the U.S., any earnings up to about 120,000 U.S. is excluded from taxation in the U.S. So I file, but I don't pay because I earn under 120,000 U.S. So if you earn your money in France, even a great salary, as long as you're under 120K, you owe zero of it in most cases to Uncle Sam because you pay your taxes here in France, which I do. But the most important thing to remember is you still have to file a return. But as I said, I am not a tax professional, so consult your accountant to go over your particular situation. All right, number three, that you have to be a French citizen to live in France, or that I am one, or that's everyone's goal, and that is automatic. None of that is true. Being a citizen in France and a permanent resident, they're two different things, but they both mean you can legally reside in pants, in pants, wow. In France, <laughs> uh, pay your taxes, uh, work. And I'm a permanent resident here in France on a carte de séjour. That's the equivalent of a green card in the U.S. Since my husband's French, I'm here legally with a French husband. I have the right, like I said, to work, to live, to pay taxes. Becoming a French citizen is not automatic, and you don't have to become a citizen to live in France. I personally, I told you before, I have not pursued citizenship yet because it's a pretty long process, usually several years. It's pretty tedious, tons of paperwork, tons of bureaucracy, and it's expensive, and it would change nothing about my day-to-day -day life. I could have started the process, I believe, after four years of marriage, and the only thing it would change in my day-to-day -day life is one, give me a French passport, and also give me the right to vote in France. So becoming a citizen, it's not a huge priority for me at the moment, never has been. Probably do it at some point, um, but right now any extra money I have that goes towards flights back to visit family or toward uh, maintaining our home. But citizenship is an option, it's there for me when and if I wanna pursue it. All right, number four, that French healthcare is free and perfect. And I have a lot to say on this. First, there is a peace that comes with knowing France views access to healthcare as a basic human right, I love that. And it's not a privilege of working for a, a good employer or like a privilege for, for being a good citizen. It is a human right. So you're not going to bankrupt yourself if you have an accident or, I don't know, a major health diagnosis. Another important point is that healthcare in France is not tied to your employment. So if you lose your job, if you quit your job, your family and, and you, uh, by default, you don't lose access to your health care, nor are you forced to pay into something ridiculous like what we have in the U.S., COBRA. But that said, French health care is not free, not even close. It's not free at the point of service in most cases, nor is it free on the back end. Now, it is true that you will pay very little, at least by American standards, when you receive care, when you go to the doctor, when you go to the hospital. And a lot of that is reimbursed. But going to the doctor in France is not free. And I'm going to try to explain how this works. I'm going to oversimplify it just to give you the basics. So you pay 25 euros directly to your primary care physician at the time of the visit. You could pay that by card, by check, cash. And a percentage is automatically reimbursed to your bank account a few days later um, by France's social security system. Let's say cute. That's automatic. There are no healthcare plans to choose from. You don't pick your coverage. And every French person or French permanent resident like me, we have the same base fees and reimbursement when we go to the doctor. Unlike the U.S., where the plan you have, it makes a huge difference in terms of coverage and cost. Now, on top of that, you do have the choice of whether you have supplementary insurance, top-up insurance, that you pay out of pocket, and that is called a mutuelle. And in this case, an additional portion may be reimbursed if you choose to have a mutuelle. Most people do have one because the Social Security base reimbursement rates 
aren't always great. And if you do end up needing surgery or maybe more involved medical care, you want to make sure that you're not paying too much, right? Now, our mutual, it has decent coverage. We pay $152 a month for the both of us. You don't really have to look too far to hear about great experiences with the French healthcare system. I've had many. I've heard so many great stories, you know, from a cancer diagnosis, major surgeries, medication costs, and how affordable it was. But none of that magically happens. Healthcare is funded by these social charges that I've already spoken about and our taxes. And as I said, salaries are lower here because the employer pays a huge chunk on the back end to fund those social charges. But it is not all unicorns and rainbows. I want to be clear. Sometimes it could take a while to get appointments with a specialist. If you're a new patient and you need to see a dermatologist in my area, a six-month wait, actually, I think it's nine months. It's pretty much the norm. And it's not that much better for a dentist or an ophthalmologist in my area, which is like a, a medical desert is what they call it. And I want to be clear. Yes, of course, that can happen in the U.S. as well. You can wait a while for an appointment, but it happens in France, too. So I don't want people to think, oh, it's a perfect system. You know, things happen here as well. And this is another example. Last week, early March, I finally got an appointment for an ultrasound after originally seeing my primary care doctor Back in September, so do the math there, the first appointment available was a six-month wait away. And when I first called to schedule it back in September, the books for 2024, they weren't even opened yet. So thank goodness it all checked out. I was able to make the appointment. But honestly, like certain types of diseases progress quickly. This was to check to make sure I didn't have the same cancer that my mom died from. And I couldn't help but think, wow, a six-month wait for some people? could definitely have had detrimental consequences. Another thing that I talked about here, you have bad doctors in France too, like anywhere. And I've had a bunch of, in addition to great experiences, a bunch of less than perfect ones over the years. I made a video, uh, Defeated at the Doctor, if you want to check that out. You know, France is not immune to that stuff. And another thing, things here are done differently than what you might be used to. You know, I was denied a prescription for an EpiPen for an allergy. Even out of pocket here in France, they cost a fraction of what they do in the U.S., and that was because my allergist thought it would be very unlikely for me to have an anaphylactic reaction. Maybe, maybe not. I hope I don't find out. But since it's a public system, some doctors are more hesitant to write prescriptions and order tests. You know, the doctor is in charge. If you advocate for yourself, something that we're kind of taught to do that we have to do in the U.S., it might not be taken well. Also, you're not going to find urgent care chains in France, like the super convenient um, for profit ones, like in shopping malls that we have in the U.S., and I'm not saying France doesn't have emergency care. Yes, yes, we do. But I'm referring to those one-stop, like, walk-in shops with extended hours where you can kind of avoid the ER and see a medical doctor to get um, lab work, x-rays, all of that done in one place without any bureaucracy for urgent but non-emergency matters. And something else, dental care is not particularly well reimbursed, even with the mutuel, and even less so once you need something like a big like dental implant or a crown or a root canal and then a crown. To give you an example on that, I wear a night guard at night just so I don't like clench my teeth. And the total cost to have one was 350 euros. And half of it, even after the Seiku and the mutuel, came out of pocket because it's just in general, it's not a well-reimbursed item, and it's not a cosmetic thing, it's a medical thing, but still, I was paying like 170 you know? And no, it's not huge, but when you factor in how much we pay for healthcare, it's not nothing either. Something else that surprised me is you'll also pay out of pocket for therapy if you want to see a psychologist, and if you have a psychotic break, something more serious, psychiatry appointments are covered by the SACU. You go to the ER, uh, you could see a psychiatrist, but if you want to see a psychologist, if you suffer from anxiety, depression, whatever. It's often cost prohibitive. But all of that said, I want to return to my original point that healthcare is a basic human right in France. And that counts for a lot. I love that. Even if the system is far from perfect. All right. Five, that life in France is better for every foreigner. And it's better here than life in their home country every single time for everyone. And that's not true. And every time I make a post on my blog, on social media, here on YouTube about a positive aspect of France, Someone in the comments or in real, real life, they'll say something like, oh my God, you're so lucky. I wish I could move there. Must be nice. You know, and yeah, it is nice, but people have this impression that living in France is synonymous with this perfect carefree life. Like it's some kind of prize that we're all just hoping to win that just fell into my lap. And there are many reasons why someone might, might want to move abroad or move back to their home country. And I found that People really romanticize living abroad in France. And I think that is damaging. It's damaging to assume 
that everyone living abroad has an easier, better, or happier life than they did in their home country. And it's also damaging because when things aren't going great, it makes it that much harder for people to speak up. You know, France has a lot going for it, but it's not a utopia either. And anyone who says otherwise either hasn't lived here long enough or is lying. And I stand by that. Life as a foreigner in France long term, it can be hard. I have never sugarcoated that. And people in France, French people who have been, the, been here their whole lives, they have problems here like people anywhere. It's not a dreamland, you know? And it's so true that our problems follow us wherever we go, whether that's health issues, divorce, financial issues, grief, addiction, anything, right? This can happen anywhere. And living in la belle France, it doesn't make us immune to any of them. Now, many of the misconceptions I just mentioned, they play into a fundamental difference that I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on here. And it's a difference in how the U.S. and France view society as a whole and our place in it. Now, I want to quote an article from The Connection, and they explain this difference so well. So let me put it up on screen for you. The difference between the French dream and its American counterpart is solidarity. It's an experience of communality, not individuality, requiring the sacrifice of part of one's liberty in the common interest. Let that sink in. In France, we pay into the system for the greater good of all. And it is a mindset difference that's all about solidarity and improving the life for the greater good for everyone. To live in France and to live well, you have to be on board with that concept because otherwise, you're always going to be an outsider, you're always going to be a foreigner, and you're going to be a really unhappy one. Lastly, if you haven't checked out my e-guide titled 75 Beginner France Travel Tips for a Standout Trip, I would love you to check it out. I've linked it down below in the description box. And it has all kinds of tips for when you come to France, just to be better prepared so you know what to expect. Everything about food, going out to eat, culture, transport, money. And it's a way to support my channel. So if you enjoy what I do here, my e-guide's a way to say thanks. And I really do appreciate that because what it does is it allows me to keep making videos for you guys Content that's free. My videos are never going to be behind a paywall, no Patreon membership, or no membership site, nothing like that. It's all free. And if you picked up my guide, I would love to know in the comments if it helped you out on your trip. Let me know. With that, I just want to say thank you for watching. Let me know what major misconceptions about life here has kind of gotten you like, oh, that's not right. And you want to speak up about it. The place is down in my comment section. So if you relate, I want to hear from you. Or maybe there are ones that I haven't mentioned that are big that you want to talk about. So Put it down below, and with that, I'm going to leave it here for today. Thanks again for being here. As always, merci encore, and salut.